Hi, this is Seek, and today we're going to learn about Newton's Cradle. Your goal as young engineers is to design and create Newton's Cradle using household items such as string, marbles, and popsicle sticks. Our goal by the end of this experiment is to know why the marbles move the way they do and the science behind them. This experiment can show things in real life such as seesaws, billiard balls, and tug of war. I hope you have fun. Now we're going to talk about the learning concepts that you will learn when you do your Newton's Cradle. The first concept is potential energy. Potential energy is the energy stored in an object depending on the position or state the object is in, and it's the energy that is ready to be used. Now we're going to talk about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy in an object due to its motion. Next, we will talk about conservation of energy. Conservation of energy means that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Rather, the energy is transformed or transferred to another form. Friction, drag force, and air resistance are all forces that act in the opposite direction of your object's movement. Therefore, when these forces are acted upon your object, it essentially slows it down. Momentum is the measure of a mass in motion. It can be considered the power that the object contains when it is in motion. Therefore, it can also represent the force that it may be exerted on an object if it may come in contact with the object in motion. Momentum's formula is mass times velocity. Hi guys. So we can look at an example of a roller coaster to talk about potential energy, kinetic energy, conservation of energy. Um, momentum and friction slash air resistance slash drag force. So with a roller coaster, um, if you've ever been on one or seen one, you know that you're in a cart and the first part of the roller coaster is always to go up to a certain height, you usually slowly go up. Um, and that's because you're storing that energy so that you can fall once you hit the max height. Um, so once you hit that max height, you're at your maximum potential energy to fall. Once you fall, that's where kinetic energy comes into play. That is where um, you, all there is left to do is to fall, right? So um, your kinetic energy comes into play because of that buildup. And um, then with conservation of energy, we can see that you can't have one without the other, right? Like you can't get on a roller coaster and just fall unless you have some height. Um, and that height would be your potential energy. Um, then momentum comes into play because momentum is equal to mass times velocity. Your cart has a good amount of mass, including you. Um, so once it gets to that potential energy and falls with the kinetic energy, there's a certain amount of velocity that it has, and that mass of that cart will keep that velocity going. Um, then lastly, we have air, fr uh, air resistance, friction, and drag force, which is all the same thing. Um, and this is minimized in a lot of roller coasters, ships, and airplanes with their shape. If you see in their shape, it's very conical. That's to pierce through the air so that the air resistance isn't as big of a factor. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest will tend to stay at rest and an object in motion will tend to stay in motion unless acted on by another force. So you can see this, my ball, if I roll it across the surface, it will keep rolling until it enough friction of the surface rubs against it to stop the ball. Newton's second law of motion states that the amount of force applied to an object is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Uh, this means that a more massive object or an object that is speeding up or accelerating is going to exert a larger force. Uh, this is why if you have like a really light foam ball like this versus a really heavy water bottle, uh, it takes more force, because this one has more mass, to move these objects around. Uh, and that's a result of the second law. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, so, for example, if I drop this ball, it's going to bounce because the force of it falling is exerted back onto it in the equal direction uh, when it hits the table and it bounces back up. That's why if I push on this really ugly ball, uh, nothing, nothing's changing because uh, for all the force that I apply to the wall, it applies the exact same force back to me and nothing moves. 
So a key concept that we need to understand this week is what a pendulum is and how it functions. So a pendulum is just a weight tied to a string um, and it ha follows the same repeated pattern of motion. Um, so an example of this would be, you know, when you're at the playground and you get on a swing set and the swing goes forward and it goes all the way back and you just keep following that pattern of motion, that's essentially what a pendulum is. And this back and forward movement of the pendulum is called an oscillation. And for you to complete one oscillation on the swing set is when you go all the way back to the highest height and then you go all the way forward to the same height. And that's called one oscillation. And the time it takes for you to complete this one oscillation is called a period. So let's go over the materials now. For materials, you are going to want 18 popsicle sticks or cardboard, 50 inches, of, 50 inches of string or yarn, any tape, five marbles for the actual cradle itself, hot glue and a hot glue gun, and this can be replaced with regular glue if you don't have uh, hot glue, and if you have some straws lying around, definitely use those as well. Please use what other, other household items that you can get your uh, hands on. Really, uh, really use your creativity because again, this the goal is not to use the most materials, but to understand why we use certain materials over other materials. What's up everybody? I'm Ben. I'm Katrina. Um, and today we're going to be making a Newton's Cradle. So we'll walk y'all through the steps. Okay, so for materials, um, you can use just about anything that is sturdy enough to support this. So we are using pencils. Um, you guys can use cardboard, um, popsicle sticks are the best, um, but anything else. What's up everybody? We're back. Um, we have just made our base structure here. Um, so we are using clay instead of um, hot glue um, to attach our pencils together. So now we have a base structure. We're going to build it up and go from there. And we're back. Um, we have just built our top layer here. Um, we built our structure up, secured it with um, clay on the ends and taped down these structures. We have just super glued our marbles to our pieces of string and we're now going to attach them to the sides. We'll catch y'all later. Alright everybody, um, we have just taped on the strings and the marbles. We've only taped on three, you can tape on the last two, um, but it was a bit hard for us to tape on these first three, so we just taped on three. Um, so we can see a demonstration here of how this works. I can lift up this back one and we can see that um, primarily the momentum is conserved throughout this whole thing and that transfers over and swings it up, swings it up, swings it up. And the only thing that slows it down is air resistance and energy leaving through sound. Um, hope y'all enjoyed building yours and y'all have a fantabulous day. Bye. Now that you've completed the project, here are some questions to think about. Describe what you see happening in the Newton's Cradle. Why do you think this happens? I'll give you all a couple of seconds to think about it. All right, next thing. Try and lifting and releasing two marbles at one time instead of one. What, what is different about this versus lifting just one up and releasing it? And then which of Newton's laws do we observe in the Newton's cradle? And a follow-up question to that is, what are other applications of Newton's laws?